Welcome back to Dylan with Age of Wonders 4, where we continue the journey of Breaker and the Anointed Orcs in episode 19. Let's actually work on the fishmonger. That'll be real nice. Bastion can annex another province, so I need to consider what province I'm going to take. I think I'm going to start moving to the north here. Normally I don't recommend taking huts, but I do say in my guide that I'm working on that you should take huts if it gives you the opportunity to reach other things such as this arcanium or the iron deposit in the mana node. However, I could boost this bathhouse by building one quarry, which I have not yet done in this city, and a quarry would increase their production, which would give me more cities and more income. So as much as I want to go north, which I am going to do very very soon, probably in the next province, I'm going to build a quarry first right here. So that boosts the bathhouse, that increased our city stability, so now we're getting city stability of stable, plus 5% production, draft, and food. We got some of our gold back, so we can start working on a market that'll give us even more gold income, plus 15. And we received a message from somebody. Uh, Mashara. My rivalry with Rakshagi is no secret. Join me, and we will prevail over her together. She calls on us to issue a declaration of rivalry to Rakshagi. Maybe. We can't yet propose an alliance. I don't like doing rivalries against people for the simple fact that it costs gold, and gold is so useful. She actually has some war justification against us, interestingly enough. Yeah, I could buy that grievance from her, but I'm not concerned with anything that she has to do in that way. She's not going to attack us, we're allies. This game is, as far as I know, not like civilization where sometimes your allies will end up attacking you. At least the older civilizations. Unless, of course, you're allied to somebody who's a prick. Alright, we're moving on to the next turn. But pretty soon here, we're going to start just steamrolling the AI, I think. We're going to march our western armies onto Kinslayer first, and we're going to burn that... Well, not burn the city to the ground. We're going to vassalize the city. And then we're going to probably march north and west, take Lothek, and then swing down to take the capital city of Dimtir. So first, we're going to reorganize our troops inside our territory, get our armies settled so that we have the correct compositions of our soldiers. Right now our soldiers are kind of uh, not very well distributed. Alright, so I've got the composition of the main three stacks here. We've got Runa with a chaplain, two anvil guards, two arbalists. That's a pretty decent composition. We've got Bray Gear with Bray Gear, two Zephyr Archers, a Halberdier, an anvil guard, and a Steel Shaper. The Steel Shaper I'm probably going to get rid of in not too long. And then we've got this Autumn Fairy army with an Autumn Fairy, a Fury, two anvil guard, two arbalists. We have a backup army to provide units in case we have any losses of a Inferno, an Inferno Puppy, a Lesser Tide Spirit, Vampire Spider Hatchling, and a Pioneer Scout to give us a little more vision so that we can see further. So that's the Western Army. I definitely do need a Chaplain, which I am working on, in Bastion to help support them. I'm probably going to switch out the Still Shaper and maybe even fire the Still Shaper. We've also got another Zephyr Archer coming up the backside to help support right there. We got ourselves another Barb Shield from our prospecting. Let's see if we can't sell that to Mashar for something good. Ye yes. We might be able to get 183 gold if we wait one turn, so I'm going to wait one turn. If we get any more magic materials, I'd definitely like to sell those to Mashara as well, as long as we have one more for ourselves. Let's go ahead and cast a Windborn Scout, so it's not going to affect our army that much, but we might as well. So now they'll be flying. And I literally cannot see them. <laughs> we built a market in Bastion, let's see if we can get a mint going, I believe. Alternatively, an estate hall would not be a bad choice. But a mint is definitely where it's at. We need more gold so that we can build more buildings to get more income. The only thing that we can build an orc site right now is a crypt, which is not very useful. We'd only get two mana per turn and the ability to resurrect heroes from our crypt. But we only have one body in our crypt and I don't have any interest in building defensive structures in orc site. Because we are in no danger pretty much whatsoever of being directly attacked. So they're just going to wait. Let's also go ahead and start working on an army heal spell so that we have that ready to go. The Haunted Graveyard is sending another invasion force, but we will stop them very soon. Alright, day 41, let's see here. 
I do want the plus 5 gold from the specialist districts, however, if I can get the minus 20% gold to build city structures, that's going to be fantastic. Let's go ahead and let's get that first. That's going to save us more gold than the amount of gold that we'll get from the province improvements very quickly. Oh, there's a big kraken down here. Interesting. We're going to stop this tiny little bone golem with a pursuer easily. Auto combat. We crushed them and Brager took a surprising amount of damage in that fight. Uh, in consideration of that, I'm going to manually fight this, but cut it out of course. Alright, we sustained no damage in that fight. The AI just really doesn't know how to play industrial civilizations. We're going to crush this eastern invading marauder army. So let's see how the AI does it. The AI got a unit killed. Unacceptable. 100% unacceptable. Alright, no losses, only a very small amount of damage on the Anvil Guards. We got Keeper's Mark unlocked, we're probably going to start working on that immediately. Let's do that before I forget. Keeper's Mark, let's begin. We finished it. Oh, no, almost finished it. Let's go ahead and pick the next research. Mm, I kind of want to shuffle this research and see if I can get anointed people. No, I got Salvation. Or Ducting Cyclone. Let's go with Salvation. Orc Slight, let's see. Man, we're producing 302 gold from the city. That's incredible. Let's go ahead and grab this farm up here. It is kind of going to be taken away from Astad, but it's going to give us more food so we can grow faster. Before I start anything in Orc Slight, I want to first start work on the Mint over here in Molegrave. So let's do that. That leaves us with 195 gold. Let's see what we can get in Orcsite now. You can't quite get the Wizard Tower at Apex. Perhaps we can sell something. Yeah, she'll take that barb shell for 183 gold now. I'll do that. That gives us enough gold to begin work on the Wizard Tower Apex. That will give us more Imperium as well as plus two vision range in the city. And Aestad can finally annex its first province. I could absolutely take this Archon Blood for plus 20 mana as well as plus 20 combat casting effects if we didn't already have an Archon Blood, but we do already have one. However, I'd really like to get this quarry built so we can start working on other buildings in ASTAT first, as well as finishing up that workshop. We've actually finished our collection of liquids, so now we get plus 10 knowledge and plus 10 mana from mana resource nodes, as well as the combat casting points from Archon Blood, world map casting points from Astral Dew, Researching spells cost 10% less knowledge with the Tranquility Pool. And then we get the Haste Berries at the moment. So we have Founding, Migrating, and Absorbing Cities takes minus 2 turns. We have Rainbow Clover, which gives plus 100 relations with Free Cities and Rulers. And we have Arcanium Ore, which gives us cheaper her unit costs. And Fireforge Stone units cost less draft straight up. We've almost completed our collection of everything. A Free City declared war on us. Who is this? Sunrise. Who are you? I don't even know where the city is at, to be honest. Oh, here it is. He actually conquered a city from Mashar, I believe. That's okay. We'll take care of him. Oh, let's go ahead and let's switch the Rune Carver camp to be the unit deploy location for Orcs Light. Let's do that pretty quick. I'd like to get another Zephyr Archer, but I'm short by two gold. So we'll go ahead and we'll wait on that one. There are a lot of patrolling armies up here in the northeast. It's a good thing we brought the stack that we did. The Marauders are getting stronger as the game progresses. I think it's time we brought down these Marauders, so let's step forward. Let's bring up the armies in the back. Make sure that we're close enough to engage this troop right here, not quite. Let's step to right here, step to here, and then we can start this fight. This fight... Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. It's only one stack versus our stack. The defending stack does not get involved. There's also a Black Flag Marauder guarding some haste berries here. I'm not worried about this. That's actually a horned god. That's a horned god, right? Yeah, that's a horned god. The marauders are definitely getting more powerful as the game progresses. We should be able to just smack this stack pretty easily. Mm -hmm. That was a bone. Those are bone dragons. Ooh. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can't fight this battle better myself. I'll actually show you guys what the bone dragons look like. 
Although I won't show the whole battle. If you want to speed this up, you can right-click. So there you go. Here are some bone dragons. So the bone dragons, they have poison breath that attacks all units in a 3 hex cone. Base 60% chance of inflicting poisoned. They got tail swipe, attacks 3 adjacent units and removes their defense mode and retaliation attack. They have 160 health. They got some zombies to back them up. I'm not too worried about that. Their resistances are weak to spirit, weak to fire. We're going to take advantage of that as best we can. They've also got terrifying aura, so we lose morale when we're adjacent to them. Siege breaker. Alright. Yeah, so I'm just going to cut this out. I've got enough units that I'm pretty sure it's not going to be a big deal. I've just got to be very careful about how I address these things. Alright, that was actually a kind of tricky battle. We did take less damage than the AI did. We managed to taunt one of the bone dragons to prevent it from using its poison breath. But one of the other bone dragons did manage to use a poison breath. And man, that thing has a very big area of effect. Really impressive. The zombie wasn't a problem. So we took care of that. Fantastic. We're going to straight up fire the steel shaper. We do not need the steel shaper. Goodbye. Bring in the Zephyr Archers, please, and thank you. As well as the Chaplain, actually. Putting the Chaplain into that stack would be a good idea. So let's move. Let's replace an Arbalist with a Zephyr Archer. And then let's bring in the Chaplain into Breger's primary stack. Alright, so that's the Western Force pretty well taken care of. They're going to maintain their position for a little while because I spent some of their movement points just consolidating and moving the compositions around. We've got Keeper's Mark ready to go. It's going to cost us 14 gold per turn and 28 mana per turn. Their mana per turn is no big deal whatsoever. The gold is going to hurt just a little bit, but this is going to get balanced out by Faithful. And this applies to even like tier 3, tier 2 units like that. So it is going to probably reduce our income. It might balance it out. We'll find out. Eh, it's about the same. But hey, now our, now our units will not die on the turn that they're about to die. We could get casting reserves now that gives us plus 20 combat casting and world map casting points. We will definitely take that up. I am very happy to start getting some astral affinity. We could start building our tier 3 bastions now. They have more defense than our anvil guards have by default. They also have a lot better resistance against magic. They don't, however, get the taunt ability, and the taunt ability is extremely useful. So I'm not going to start making use of Bastions, at least quite yet. They do have an upkeep right now of 19 gold and 3 mana per turn, so they'd be kind of expensive. I'd rather get some more Zephyr Archers running, which is exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start one Zephyr Archer in Orc's Light, and then I might start hurrying production in Astad, which is what I'm going to do for 38 gold. I'll finish that off. Right after that, we're going to start working towards a worker's farmstead. We're probably going to boost that with a forester on the Archon Blood in two turns, and then switch that over to a conduit or a research post. Probably going to keep it as a conduit. I just like to maintain uh, mana per mana, or research on research, that kind of thing. But you can do what you want. We can also hurry the production of the mint, which is going to get us an extra 20 gold per turn, so that'll actually help pay for the 40 gold that we're going to do right now. Good deal, up to 295 gold income. And in this particular city, I want them to start working on an estate hall as soon as possible. And we're not going to be able to boost that with foresters, but that's okay. We're just going to accept that. Alright, the Haunted Graveyard produced another stack of units. Let's go ahead and let's smack them out of the sky. Those Bone Wyverns are going to die. Auto combat, see how we do. Good deal, not much damage, awesome. And now let's crush this haunted graveyard for good. Auto combat, do your thing. Fantastic. We got a good deal, a uh, decent amount of knowledge, and we got evoker's robes. I like evoker's robes, plus one resistance, but magic damage does plus 20%. That was fantastic, let's see who we want to give those to. Breger actually already has some, so that's a good deal. So maybe we want to give it to Korra? Korra would be a decent choice. What about Runa? Yeah, Runa could definitely use it. We want more damage on her. Getting status resistance is helpful. However, she has 8 status resistance as it is, with the Ring of Endurance helping her out. So that means that we can switch the Robe of Endurance, which is I believe that's what that's called, over to Korra. 
a robe of resistance, so plus one magic resistance, plus two stash resistance. She will lose ten hit points and two defense, but that's no big deal to me. My mages can be squishy, that's okay. There was another red flag marauder army up here, so I want to go check out those people. I don't want to get Astad being attacked all of a sudden, which that might be the direction that they were heading. I'm very concerned about that. The western army is... ooh, hello there. What is this? So we've got some warlocks, some skeletons, some pursuers. We've got uh, more night guard, dark warriors, lesser tide spirit, lesser storm spirit. Warlock, bone golem, dark warriors, pursuers. Some basic units, not bad. A lot of garbage, to be honest. And we have the ability to strike these fools right now. So let's push up, let's get in range, and I'm going to very carefully start murdering them. One by one. So if we attack this stack, we'll face these two units, it looks like, these two armies to help. If we attack this stack, it'll be the same thing. So let's go ahead, let's engage. This should be a safe battle. We'll auto-resolve. We'll see how the AI does. We'll allow the AI to use combat spells. If we lose any units, I'll actually manually battle this. And if I find it interesting, I'll leave it in. Otherwise, I'll just cut it out. But I have a feeling that we're just going to stop these guys. Hey, Gloom's here. Yeah, Gloom's in the stack, as well as Grendel the Unwavering. So Gloom has a Magic Blast, a Frost Damage, a Wand of Inversion. Removes all negative status effects from the target alley and grants a random positive status effect for each negative wand removed. Nice. Restore. Okay. What else you got going on? You got a Book of Siegecraft as well. Very nice. I'd love to take that from you. But I can't actually take roller bodies. A Horn of Plenty. So they heal all units of the army plus 5 hit points every world map turn. We definitely want to take Gloom out. Staff of Frost. A Crown. Fiery Wake Boots just like us. A Ring of Concealment. So that's why I couldn't see them. Cannot be seen on the world map. Experienced leader. What about your friend here? Grendel the Unwavering. A melee unit. Siege. Look at this. The AI gets a bunch of bullcrap, man. They get a lot of, like, replicas. They've also got Horn of Plenty. So taking this unit out is very good. He does have a Hunter Spider, so that's something to keep in mind. The web is always a very potentially damaging and immobilizing ability. He's got barbed shield, so we're going to want to kill him from range. We do not want to attack him directly. Siege breaker, siege breaker. Yeah, let's give the AI a chance. I suspect that we're going to lose a couple units, but if I play, we're going to stop these guys. Because they have mostly melee troops with some squishy backline ranged. And some scouts in here to go. So auto combat. Man, this battle, that battle took the AI a while. We took more damage than I would like to, considering the fact that we're going to engage in another fight right after this. So I will go ahead and do this manually. And I'll... I won't actually compare the results, but let's go ahead, let's do this manually. I think that this fight is actually interesting enough with Gloom present that I might want to go ahead and put it up. I will, of course, do this on fast speed, though. So they're going for a distributed unit tactic. They're not clumping up. That doesn't matter. I mean, that does kind of matter to us. We do have Zephyr Archers after all. Let's increase the speed of combat to 3. How do I want to address this? I'm thinking that we pull the Northern Army Southeast, so we fight them in this choke point right here. We step forward the Southern Army to fight them along this Southern checkpoint, then we should be able to focus and concentrate our forces into the Southern part of the map and just grind them away as they come at us, which they basically have no choice but to come at us. Unfortunately, none of our heroes are here that have the summon elemental abilities. I really wish that they were over here, but that's okay. Gloom's not really a threat. They mostly just have healing abilities. The melee hero is kind of a problem, though. They can jump. That's something to be aware of. But chances are they're going to come in here, jump into our force, and then we're going to murder Grendel. What about these warlocks? They have a Sundering Curse, which fires a range of six. The Pursuers have a range of four. The Sundering Curse is always a nice ability. I like using it as the dark. I'm interested to see what kind of spells they throw at us as well. That's definitely something to always be aware of when you're fighting a roller, is what kind of potential spells they might use against you. As far as I know, there's no way to tell until you actually fight them in combat. Alright, so we've kind of gone with the plan I was going with. Moving the Northern Army is going to take time, so we're going to consolidate and probably swing more to the south over time. 
The enemy is going to attack us. They're going to throw their spells at us. Gloom's... Gloom's not a wizard? What? Gloom's in a sin. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the video so much that you reached the end. Since you liked the video so much, why not leave the video a like since it helps the video and the channel reach a wider audience that enjoy this kind of content. And I'd like to hear any opinions you have about the video or my moves in the comments below. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe, and Breaker and I will see you in episode 20.